So we've been going through the process of multiplying out terms uh, to get an expression. So like taking an x plus four times an x plus three and getting out x squared plus seven x plus 12. And remember that when we did that, we said, hey, this middle term we got by adding and these outside terms we got from multiplying. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use that today to do this process in reverse. So instead of me giving you the x plus four times x plus three and asking you to come up with what that multiplies out into, I'm gonna give you the x squared plus seven x plus 12 and ask you what it originally was. And you're gonna work backwards and tell me, oh, that was x plus four times x plus three. So we're gonna talk through how to do that. Uh, once again, uh, you may have seen this before and you may have seen ways to do it before. I'm gonna teach it uh, the way that I usually teach it as if it's brand new to you. So that's what we're gonna do uh, today. So first off, we're gonna do a problem and then I will uh, have some step-by-step -step things for you to write down on how to do these problems. The first thing that you do is that you're gonna take your uh, outside terms, remember, because these outside terms uh, we get from multiplication, so you're gonna take these and we're gonna multiply them. So I'm gonna take a positive two times a positive three, and that's a positive six. And then I'm gonna put my middle term, I'm gonna take my middle term and put it over here, which is a positive seven. And that's gonna be my building blocks for this first step. And this first step is kind of a little puzzle in, a, in and of itself. And the puzzle that's going on here is that remember, the outer terms are from multiplying, the middle term is from adding. And so I wanna basically keep track of both of them at the same time. So what I'm gonna be asking for is I'm, I'm looking for two numbers that at the same time, they multiply to be the positive six and they also add to be the positive seven at the same time. Now, some of you might have already spotted it. Uh, this one's a pretty easy one to see what, what it's gonna be. Um, but I'm gonna walk through how we do this and look at this. So what I always do when I'm thinking about how do I get the multiplying and the adding is before I start listing out numbers and trying out numbers, I think about the signs and what the sign should be. So if we have, if we want to multiply to be a positive six, again, I'm just thinking about signs. So I'm thinking about multiplying to be a positive. That can happen, multiplying to be a positive can happen in two different ways. I can of course have a positive times a positive, that's a positive, but I can also have it how? What's the other way I can multiply two things and have it be a positive? Negative and a negative, because a negative times a negative is also a positive. So those are my two different ways I can multiply to be a positive. But since I'm trying to add to get a positive seven, that tells me that these signs should both be positive. So I want a positive here and a positive here. And then I can list out my numbers, my factors of six, my numbers that multiply to be six. Well, I always have one in itself. So one times six is six. And then what's my other pair of numbers that multiply to be six? Three and two, so I have two times three. Two times three is also six. So those are number-wise, those are my two pairs of numbers that I have to choose from. So which choice, which choice of multiplying to be six is gonna add to seven? It's the one in six. A positive one and a positive six. So 
So now we're gonna use those numbers to split apart my middle term. That's what we're gonna use them to do. So my first term stays my first term, it's still a two X squared. My last term stays my last term, it's still a plus three. But for my middle term, for my middle term, instead of a plus seven X, instead of a plus seven X, I'm gonna use these two numbers that I just came up with. So instead of plus seven X, I'm gonna write plus one X and plus six X. Notice I haven't actually changed the expression. It's still equal to what it started at. If I combine the X and the six X back together again, I would still have the seven X. I'm still at the same thing I wound up with at the start of the problem. And I'm splitting it up so that I can do the next thing I'm gonna do, which is I'm gonna take this expression and I'm gonna split it into two groups. Uh, in fact, this way of uh, this way of factoring, which is what we're doing, this way of factoring is called factoring by grouping. And it's called grouping because we create these two groups. So I'm gonna start with my first group. And in each group, I'm gonna see what can be factored out of each group, what can be taken out of each group, what's a common number or variable or both that can be taken out of this entire group. So in my first group, 2x squared plus x, what can be taken out? Well, there's not a number that, that factors into both of those, but I do have a variable. I do have an X in both of these first two terms. So that means that I can take an X and take it out of both of those first two terms. So when I do that, I have a uh, 2X squared here. Well, I just took one of the X's out. So I still have the two there, but one of my two X's is taken out. And so I just have one of the X's left over. Plus, well, I just took an X out. So if I took an X out of here, then I don't have a variable anymore. And so the only thing I'm left with is the number out in front of here, which is one. Another way to think about it is that what I'm really doing is dividing an X out of both of these. And so if I take X divided by X, I have just one. And again, I haven't changed the value of anything. If I distribute it back out again and take x times 2x plus one, take the x times 2x, I wind up with 2x squared, take the x times one and I get x. So this is still the same thing, I'm just writing it differently. And you'll see what I get and come up with in a second. First sign I see is a plus, first thing I'm gonna write is a plus. And then, well, I don't have an X in both of these terms anymore, so I can't take an X out because it's not in both terms. But there is a number that I can divide out of both of those, which is three. So I can take a three out of both of these pieces. And when I do that, I'm basically taking and dividing each of these pieces by three. So I have a six X, I divide it by three, so the X is still there. And I have six divided by three, which is two out in front of the X. Plus, well, I'm taking three, dividing it by three here. So when I take three divided by three, I'm left with one. And again, if I distributed the three back out, I would wind up back at the six X plus three.
And now, here's the last thing we can do to get our final answer here. I have a 2x plus 1 here that's matching with a 2x plus 1 here. So those 2x plus 1s are matching. And if I have a matching thing, then I can factor it out of the entire expression. Doesn't matter what it is, it's a long, complicated thing, but you know, if I call this thing star, then I have x times star plus 3 times star. And so I can take the star and bring it out in front. That's basically what I'm doing. I'm saying, look, I have a matching 2x plus 1 in both of these. So I'm going to take the 2x plus 1 and just bring it out in front of the whole thing. So when I do that, what I'm left with, well, in my red group, I'm left with an x. I took out the 2x plus 1, so all that's left in the red group is an x. And in my blue group, when I took the 2x plus 1 out, all I'm left with is the plus 3. So 2x plus 1 times x plus 3 is my final answer. That's the final answer we wind up with there. And just to confirm that this is working backwards and that this is the answer that you get, if I actually did 2x plus 1 times x plus 3 like we've been doing the last couple days, then I can multiply that out and get the same answer. So 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times 3 is 6x. 1 times x is x. And 1 times 3 is 3. And I have a 6x and an x here that combine together to be 7x. And I wind up with the same thing I started with. Not only that, but I also, in this middle step, wind up with basically the same thing that I have here with those middle numbers of a positive 1 and a positive 6 that I got. So it is working backwards. This process is called factoring. Factoring because you are getting factors out. It is the same idea uh, as when we're dealing with numbers. We're just dealing with uh, bigger things. So usually, I, uh, people think about factoring with in terms of dividing. Like 2 is a factor of 10 because I can divide 10 by 2 and it comes out evenly. Um, but here, I want you to think of factoring as like pairs of numbers. So a pair of factors of, of 10 are 2 and 5. And 2 and 5 are factors of 10 because 2 times 5 is 10. And so here, my pair of factors of 2x squared plus 7x plus 3 is this, the 2x plus 1 times x plus 3. And those are factors because if I take 2x plus 1 and multiply it by x plus 3, I get 2x squared plus 7x plus 3. So that's why it's called factoring. Because I'm getting two different factors that when I would multiply them out, give me back the original problem. All right, step one, multiply your outside terms. So those, that first term and that last term that we get through multiplication, we're going to multiply them together. So we got positive 2 times positive 3 was the positive 6. Then we found two numbers that multiplied to be that number and added to be the middle term. So in other words, I wanted two numbers that multiplied to be the positive 6 and added to be the positive 7. And we worked through and found those two numbers were a positive 1 and a positive 6. That was step 1. Step 2. 
split the middle term using those two numbers. So in other words, instead of a 7x, I split them apart and said this was a positive 1x and a positive 6x. So we split the middle term using those two numbers, and that gives you your groups. So I have two groups of two terms apiece. That's step two. Then step three, within those two groups, I'm gonna take out the common factor. So I started with the 2x squared plus x and said, oh, I can take an x out of both of those. I looked at the 6x plus 3 and said, oh, I can take a 3 out of both of those. And then see what I'm left with. And what I'm left with, step 4, should be a matching term. The 2x plus 1 here was in both of them, and so I could take a 2x plus 1 out of the whole thing as one factor, and then what I was left with is the other factor. So kind of follow along with those steps as we do our next one. We have 3x squared plus 7x plus 4. Step one, multiply your outside terms. So we're going to take the positive 3 times the positive 4, and that's going to give us a positive 12. And so we are looking for two numbers that multiply to be a positive 12, and they add to be my middle term, my middle term, which is a positive 7. So just like last time, I'm going to think about the signs first. Before I start thinking about numbers, I want to think about the signs. So I want to multiply to be a positive. If I want to multiply to be a positive, then that means that I want to have either two positive or two negatives. Well, since I'm adding to be a positive, then I should want two positive numbers. So my signs should be positive and positive. Now I'm going to start listing off factors of 12. So, of course, we have one in itself. We're always going to have one in itself. Does two work? What pairs with two? Six. Does three work? What does three pair with? Four. So those are my choices. I have three pairs of factors of 12, and I want to know the ones, the pair that I'm looking for, that when I add them together, I get a positive 7. There it is, 3 and 4. Positive 3 and a positive 4. When I add positive 3 and positive 4, I get positive 7. When I multiply them together, I get a positive 12. So, step 2. My first term is still going to be my first term. My last term is still going to be my last term. But instead of that middle term of plus 7x, I'm going to turn that into a plus 3x plus 4x. So now I can split this thing into two groups of two. And so now, step three, within each group, we're going to factor out whatever common factor we can take out of each pair. So my first pair, I have a 3x squared and a 3x. And I'm going to... Uh, Take it one piece at a time of what number and what variable. So what number can I take out of both of these? What number? Well, three. I can take a three out of both of those. And variable-wise, 
Do both of those have an X on them? Yes, they do. So I can take an X out. So 3X is what I'm going to take out. And when I take a 3X out, what I'm left with, if I take a 3 out of 3X squared, then I don't have a coefficient anymore. If I take an X out, well, one of the X's is gone, so I just have one X left over. Plus, I take my x out, no more variable. If I take a 3 out, 3 divided by 3 is 1. Then, over here in my second group, I'm going to write the first sign that I see. So plus is the first sign I see, plus is the first sign I'm going to write. What number can I take out of that second group? It's going to be a 4. I can take a four out. And if I take a four out, what I'm left with, I take four divided by four and I have a one, I still have that X hanging out over there, so we still have an X left over. Plus, I have four divided by four is one. Again, don't forget that you should be able to uh, distribute all this out, combine my like terms together, and get back where I started. If I distributed this 3x and distributed this 4, I would still have uh, the 3x squared plus 3x plus 4x plus 4. And if I combine my 3x and 4x together, I would still have the 7x. So I haven't changed the expression. It's still the same thing. I'm just rewriting it in a different way. So that, step four, I have my matching term. An x plus one, it needs to be matching. If this, if this term in the parentheses is not matching, then something happened. Because that allows me to take my x plus one and take it out of the whole thing. And when I take that x plus one out of the whole thing, what am I left with in my red group? A 3x. And what am I left with in my blue group? Plus 4. And there's your final answer. Here we go. Multiply your outside terms. I have a positive 5 times a positive 6. Positive 5 times a positive 6 is a positive 30. And so I want two numbers that multiply to be a positive 30 and add to be a negative 13. Make sure you keep track of your signs. So far, they've all been positive, but now we're going to throw negatives in there. So don't lose track of your negatives on this problem. So I want them to add to a negative 13. We're going to talk about the signs first before we talk about the numbers. If I'm multiplying to be a positive, I either want both positive or both negative. Which one do I want this time? Both negative this time, because I want to add to be a negative 13. So I want a negative and a negative. And I'll pause for a moment and see if you can come up with a pair of numbers that we want. There are four pairs of numbers that multiply to be 30. You need to pick out which of those four pairs of numbers will add to be the negative 13. Negative 10 minus 3 is your negative 13. So first term is still the first term, the 5x squared. Last term is still the last term, the plus 6. But instead of that middle term of minus 13x, Instead, we're going to split it into minus 10x, minus 3x. That's what we're splitting that middle term into. So that gives me my two groups. In my first group, 
I have 5x squared minus 10x. So in that first group, start with number. What number can be divided in both of those? A 5. So I can take a 5 out. Then I want to think about variable. Do I have an x in both of these? Yes, so I can take an x out. So in total, I can take a 5x out of each of those. And if I take a 5x out of each of those, well, in my first term, took the 5 out, so no more coefficient. I took one of the x's out, so one of the x's is left over. The minus sign stays a minus sign. The x comes out, so no more x. But then I have 10 divided by 5, which is 2. So I'm left with an x minus 2. Again, if I were to distribute the 5x back out, I should wind up with this thing back. The 5x squared minus 10x. All right, then watch this part carefully. This is where your negative signs are going to happen. I'm going to write the first sign I see. So minus is the first sign I see. Minus is the first thing I'm going to write. Then what number? Three can come out of each of those. All right, here's where it's tricky. We're taking the negative out. So that means our signs are going to change. That's why I took the negative out, so that this first term is now a positive x. I want that first piece to be positive. So that's why I took the negative out, so that it changes that sign to a positive. But it also changes this other sign of the plus 6 to be a minus. Because we're taking a negative out. Then we have 6 divided by 3, which is 2. And again, if I distribute the negative 3 back out, I wind up with negative 3 times x is negative 3x. Negative 3 times negative 2 is a positive 6. So finally, moment of truth, we want these terms to match. x minus 2, x minus 2. There's our matching term. So the x minus 2 can come out of the whole thing. And when I take the x minus 2, what's left in the red? 5x. What's left in blue? Minus 3. Make sure you take the signs with it. So we have x minus 2 times 5x minus 3. And again, if you ever need to double check your answer, you can multiply it back out, and you should get back to the original problem. Um, for your homework, we're not going to dive into doing this entire thing yet. We are just going to focus on getting you some practice with the first step of this, which is finding the numbers that multiply to be one number and add to be the other number. So your homework is going to be working on a bunch of these, and we're going to we're going to do one together so that you see how these work. First of all, I always say before you talk about the numbers, let's talk about the signs. What do I want the signs to be here? Well, I want to multiply to be a negative. So if I want to multiply to be a negative, how does that happen? How do I multiply two numbers and have them be negative? What signs do I want? One positive, one negative. Negative times positive. So I want one of them to be positive, one of them to be negative. Now, since I want to add them to be a negative number, that means that I want the larger number to be the positive or the negative. Which one do I want to outweigh the other? Well, I want the negative to be outweighing the positive. So that when the negative outweighs the positive, I add and get a negative number. So my larger number should be the negative one. Let's make our list of factors of 32. 
Now let's talk about numbers. We always have one in itself. Does two work? Can I divide by two? Yes, I can divide by two, and I get 16. Can I divide by three? Thirty-two, not divide by three. Can I divide by four? Yes, I can divide by four. What pairs with four to get thirty-two? Eight. And that's my list. So I have three different choices. Now I can try each of them if I want. Remember, I want the larger number to be the negative number. So if I have one and thirty-two, then I want a positive one and a negative thirty-two. But that adds to be negative 31, so that doesn't work. So I go on to my next one. Positive 2, negative 16, bingo! That's the one I want. And remember, I want the 16 to be the negative because I want the larger number to have the negative sign attached to it. And a positive 2. So positive 2 times a negative 16 is a negative 32. Positive 2 minus 16 is a negative 14. And so those are my numbers. So I always think about the signs first, then think about your numbers and which numbers you want.